Aki wo wo, olo ko wile. Aki wo wo, olo ko wile. Aki wo wo, wa wo wo. 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 Aki hey, welcome back everyone. This is a tutorial that's based on a topic that came out of a private lesson that I was teaching to an, an educator, percussionist, somebody who's working with children, and the topic came up of how do you, how do I, teach music, teach a song, teach rhythms to a group. And in this case, it's a group of children, but this goes for any group, any kind of, you know, newbie group, people that are not familiar with the material. And I know a lot of you teach, but even if you're not teaching groups, this is a great way to also think about music and to learn and teach yourself. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating strategies. You know, a strategy or technique is something that you do in the moment while you are engaging a group uh, to make it easier, to make learning music and playing music more effective. Uh, and there's lots of things that we do that um, I don't know if you're aware of, you may or may not be aware of some of these, but I'm gonna share several techniques and strategies with you in this video to make it easier, more effective, more fun to teach and learn music, all right? So that's what we're gonna cover. I just gave you a little sample. We're gonna use this song, or I'm gonna use it right now. This is a, a simplified version of a song called Aki Wowo. It was um, on the Drums of Passion LP by Babatunde Olentunji. It's a folk song. Uh, he, he does a version that you can listen to, Drums of Passion CD LP. Go check it out. I also have done Aki Wowo as a ensemble on World Drum Club. I recorded all the parts myself. Um, so we're just using this as a, you know, as fodder for this uh, topic of how do we teach music and or song and rhythms together and you can apply the same concepts to any any song any rhythm you know from any culture we're just using Akibo as an example so uh, first of all you want to consider your group right what are the capabilities of the people you're working with whether it's children or adults older adults anybody what are their what do you feel would be appropriate for them in terms of their overall goal, you know, what, what, why, are we, why are we here together? What, what are we doing? Is it a class? Is it for fun? Is it a drum circle kind of thing? Is it a community? Is it older adults? Is it, you know, what's the purpose of it? Secondly, what is realistically, you know, something that they could do? Uh, what are their capabilities? Uh, so you want to keep that in mind so that it's appropriate, it's suitable, it's, uh, and it's that they're, you know, something they can achieve. And, um, and then three, what are the components? So I want to just put the idea out to you right now that when we do a song with a rhythm, we're doing many different things, right? We've got a beat or a pulse, basic beat. We've got rhythm patterns, right? Sometimes called beats, I'm just going to say pattern or rhythm, um, to identify a, you know, a pattern as opposed to the basic beat. Basic beat would just be, you know, the basic, the pulse. So I'll say beat or pulse, pattern or rhythm would be something more complex, like a little cycle. Then you've got phrasing, right? We've got cycles of rhythms. You might have two different parts. You might have a break and then a steady rhythm, right? So you've got that kind of stuff. Then, of course, we often have lyrics uh, we have words, and then on top of that, we have melody. There may be or maybe not be harmony, but we've at least got melody. And then we've got phrasing and form, which are our longer uh, sections. So, you know, we might repeat something four times and then do something else four times and come back. We've got form, which is, you know, A, B, A, B, or A, 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 B, A. I mean, there's different kinds of forms you can use. But for now, we're going to keep it really simple. Just talk about these things in general. And then you can build whatever you want to build musically with your groups later. But here's one of the strategies. This is the first thing, is that think about music as a constellation of elements, right? Not, it's not one thing. Think of it more like a solar system or a constellation 
of, of stars that create something that we see as one thing, but that it's actually several different things working together, right? It's a system. And we can visit parts of that constellation or that little solar system and focus on them. So the first focus might be the beat or the pulse. And one technique or strategy that you can use is to have, and I've got it down here, some sort of ankle bell or ankle rattle. It could be, you know, a, a pedal that hits something. I think it's really effective to have some sort of a rattle or ankle. I've got this ankle, it's actually a belt, but I've got it wrapped around my ankle. It's these pods. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there we go. So you can use whatever, but just have something where you can mark the steady beat, all right? So that's a big one, makes it easy for everyone. And then whatever you play on top of that, you've always got that pulse, and that's really helpful. Uh, another thing you can do is focus on, let's say, the words Akiwowo, right? In this case, Akiwowo, which is the name of the train conductor. Akiwowo. So what I might do is just introduce those two things at first and also not include the melody. I might include the melody. I might not. So I might just introduce something like Akiwowo. Aki wo wo, repeat after Aki wo wo, Aki wo wo, and you'll see if you introduce an element, you know you don't have to explain it ahead of time. This is another thing that I think a lot of us, and I've done this too, start off by talking. No, start off by playing music. People understand music. You don't have to explain the music. In fact, explaining music is like talking about a taste, talking about how, what a flower smells like. Just, just eat the food. Just smell the flower. <laughs> it's self-explanatory. So you don't have to talk about the music before you do the music. Just go straight into the music. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. And now people will create a relationship with that, and that's okay. Now let people... First of all, just do that for a little bit as an introduction. Just go into it. If it's children, they might start dancing. They might start moving around. They might start playing. You know, just let people do what they want to do with it. Let them have their relationship with it. All right? Don't, and not dictate anything. That's what I would recommend. Music is music. People will receive it. They'll create, a, there will be a relationship that gets created there. You don't have to do anything. Just provide it. Then... Once you've established a connection, then you can deepen that connection. You can add features. So another feature we could add would be a rhythm pattern. And another technique that I use is that I will often match uh, or synchronize the drum, the drum rhythm with the vocal rhythm because the vocal rhythm is not the, the basic pulse, right? It's different. So I'll give you an example. We start off, aki wo wo, aki wo wo, and then, aki wo wo, aki wo wo, aki wo wo, aki wo wo. You see what I'm doing there? So I'm just playing aki wo wo, the rhythm on the drum. And what does that do? Why do I do that? It makes it very clear. And it also juxtaposes the drum rhythm, the vocal rhythm, with the pulse. That's another relationship that people have to figure out for themselves. But if you provide the pulse, and then you do the drum rhythm, aki wo wo, aki wo wo, aki wo wo. You know, you're giving people a solid foundation. You're outlining that for them. Because when we add the melody, we've got words, melody, rhythm, just to sing the song. That's just the vocal part. So there's really three things there words, what are the words, melody, what's the melody, and the rhythm. So right now we're just doing the melody, the, um, we're not doing the melody, we're doing the words and the, and the rhythm of the words. Now, you could also do, let's say, melody and rhythm, and no words. Introduce it that way. So what I'm doing is I'm stripping away information and introducing some of the musical constellation, but not all of it. Papi pana, papi pana, and then pa 
So what I'm doing there is melody and rhythm. I might go over to that. I might start off with Akiwowo with no melody, go to melody with no Akiwowo with no words. It just depends. What I'm doing in that case, once I start this process of introducing the musical material, I'm going to be checking. Uh, I'm not just going through it like a robot, like I have a plan ahead of time, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm introducing elements and information. This is all new for people, too. You have to remember, even if you've done the song, you're familiar with it, they're not. So during this first, let's say, you know, phase, and it could be a minute, it could be five, ten minutes, we don't know. You're looking and you're checking in and you're seeing how people are doing, what they're doing, are they connecting with it, to what degree are they connecting with it, how do they look, do they look stressed out, is it easy, do they look like they're getting bored already. There's a lot of information that you, as a teacher, facilitator, guide, are gathering, and that's going to inform what you do next, and how quickly you move through it, what other elements you add, how complex you're going to build the whole thing. So that's a given all the way through. That is a standing process, right? We're always looking observing, listening, watching uh, for cues as to how is this information being integrated? How are people expressing themselves? What are they doing? What are they not doing? What are they struggling with? What do they have? You know, what's easy? What's challenging? All right. So that's always going on. Next, you add a little more. All right. And then you can create another relationship. At first, people will likely synchronize with you as the leader. So they'll just do exactly what you're doing. That's typical. You could ask them to echo you and fill in the space. And now, why would you do that? Well, it makes it easier for them to hear you because then you're by yourself when you're saying the word. If everybody starts saying Akiwowo, let's say with you, it, it it may or may not be right, or it may be something else. And then, but if everybody's saying something, uh, they can't hear you really. They can just hear the group, you know. So, which is fine. But if you want to dial it in, then you might say, "You guys echo me. I'm gonna just repeat after me." Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. Your turn. All right, and that way. It's a back and forth. And then, of course, you can introduce another element. This is probably something I would do. You say, you guys take Aki Wowo, I'm gonna do something else. Let's go. Two, three. Aki Wowo. 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 So they, they already know Aki Wowo. You guys do Aki Wowo, I'm gonna do Wowo, which is a response. And now let's switch. Ready? Go. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. Aki wo wo. All right, so they're doing the wa wo wo. Now we're moving forward. All right. Um, so that could be our introduction to the song. And then, and then I might have them do aki wo wo with some space. You guys do aki wo wo. Ready? Two, three. Olo kawile. What is he saying? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the group's doing Aki Wowo and living a space, and then I'm going to do a response that's a little bit longer. So you see, we're building, we're building the phrase. And another thing there is also synchronizing and supporting, outlining the beat and the pulse and the phrasing. Now, once people are comfortable with what they're doing vocally, then you could do a specific drum rhythm, for example. Um, it could be whatever, anything. It could be something a little more syncopated, uh, something basic. And you see how some of what I'm singing is matching that. And some of it isn't. So, you know, we just want to give people a foundation and then we can throw something else at them 
that's juxtaposing. But we don't want to lead with that. Um, the only time I would lead with doing all of that is when I'm when I first start. I might just play something as an example. You know, have people move to it, or they can do whatever they want. I might do something that's more complete as an example of where we're going. You know, so they can hear it. If you do that, often people get excited about it, like, wow, that's so cool. I want to do that. Okay, let me help you. You know, and then we go back and kind of break it down and build it up over time. So what else do we have? We've got the pulse. We've got a rhythm that you could play on the drum. Maybe, they're, maybe they learn it too. They learn the drum rhythm. You've got words, um, and then you've got the melody, and you've got the rhythm of the words and the melody, you know, the rhythm of the lyrics. Um, and then you've got phrasing. So you might have aki wo wo wa wo wo aki wo wo wa wo wo. That could be part A, let's say. And then you do something like a cue, and then you go into aki wo wo oloko ile. This is our B section. Aki wo wo oloko ile. Aki wo wo. And we'll do that. You know, we'll do that four times. It's kind of an A and B because the first time it, the melody ends up. And the second time it, it drops down. Uh, um, so you decide, you know, or the group can decide. How many times do you want to do that? How many times should we do this? How many times should we do that? Maybe four, maybe eight. Okay, let's go. And then you do it and you try it. And then some people are going to catch it. Some people don't catch it. It's okay. Just cycle through. Maybe you have a break that you do to signal, like you could use the standard djembe break, and in this case that would not be traditional, but we're not talking about traditional music right now, we're just talking about how to kind of get people, you know, doing something musical. Let's say we want to use the, the popular uh, ballet style djembe break, or something like that. Um, you could use that to cue a section. You could also, ahead of time, say let's do everything four times and then go on. So that's up to you, it's up to the group, but those are, those are some things that you can try. So let's review, uh, and of course, if any of you are patrons and you'd like to get into this a little more, or ask me questions about it, you can do that at patreon.com slash Kalani, and I teach a lot of private students. We also have the courses and classes series over there uh, on a lot of different topics, including facilitation and teaching. But what do we have? We've got have something to outline the pulse, ankle bells, ankle rattles, or maybe a little pedal that hits something. If you got a cajon, you can use a pedal, uh, or just play it. If you got a free hand, you can play it, all right? A rattle, whatever. Something to do the basic beat, the steady beat, or the pulse. Then we've got the idea of introducing simple elements, very short, and, and Akibo was a great song for this because it's so short, you can just, you don't have to do all the elements of the song. You can just pick a few things and introduce what is appropriate. So we talked early on about who is your group made up of, what are their, you know, what's your history with them, what are, what are their goals, and what are their capabilities, what are they able to do, what, what would they um, perhaps find challenging. So then that will inform you know, your, your kind of overall goal for that session. So you need to pick the right amount of material and the right type of material. Uh, let's assume that you've done that. Now you've got this constellation of pulse, rhythm patterns, words and lyrics, melody, and maybe harmony, and then you've got form. How is it kind of all going together? And then we have the idea of introducing things in synchronizing, allowing people to synchronize with you, allowing them to have their own relationship, create their own relationship with what you're doing, rather than dictating how they're going to participate right from the beginning. Let them decide how they want to connect with the music, then shape it over time by synchronizing with different elements like the, the, the uh, rhythm of the words of the song and explicitly synchronizing with that to, to reinforce it and make it clear what the rhythm is. Uh, same with the words, maybe using echoing to allow them to hear you clearly uh, and learn the words, you know, without stopping. You could, you could stop and go over the words and say, okay, we're going to say aki wo wo. Everybody say aki wo wo. And you could do that. But you could also just do it 
you know, on the run, just play music. But if you alternate it, it gives people a better opportunity uh, to hear you and then they can repeat after you. All right, so that's another strategy that you can employ. Then we've got the idea of building from simple and short to more complex, a little bit longer phrasing. So you got the idea of now you guys know Akiwowa, you know this, so do that. I'm gonna do the next thing. I'm gonna introduce something else that's new and different and not familiar to you, but you're gonna do what you already know how to do and we'll do this together. And now together we have something um, that's a level up, you know, without them having to do too much. And then when they hear you, they will start to learn the new element and then they can take over the new element. And then we've got the idea of form, uh, doing something for a certain amount of time or a certain number of cycles and then doing something else, maybe having a cue in there or not, and just rely on counting. People can count and feel the, feel the phrases, which is what we do in music. Um, and then maybe have an ending. You know, we haven't talked too much about intros and endings, but uh, you can do the same process with that. It can be free form. It can be planned out ahead of time. I'm a big fan of improv, uh, so you can always do an ending like a fade out, or you could do a big build up, or, you know, uh, for Aki Wowo, something that I would probably try or I would do is use visual cues, but uh, start really synchronizing with Aki Wowo, Aki Wowo, Aki Wowo, and then introduce the idea that we're gonna pause, right? And we're all doing Aki Wowo together. Aki Wowo. And that's all you have to do. And it will end as long as everybody's paying attention. It will, you'll end together. You don't have to plan it out. You can just do it with kind of giving some eye contact and cues and using your body language. All right. That's how you stay in the music. You introduce elements over time and you build the constellation of music from the elements of music which are again, pulse, rhythms, lyrics, melody, harmony, form, and dynamics. You could throw dynamics in there, soft to loud, accents, getting louder, getting softer, whatever you wanna do. That's what I have for you in this lesson. I hope this is helpful. I know a lot of you uh, work with groups already or you're aspiring to facilitate community drumming um, whether that's traditional drumming, traditional rhythms, folk music, basically, or it's a like freeform drum circle kind of drum jam thing, um, you can still use all of these strategies. What do you think about these? Do you do anything different? Did I miss something? Leave your kind and helpful comments below. Whatever you do, keep playing music, go out and inspire others, play music for somebody else, help other people play music. That's a great way to uh, teach yourself and to learn what maybe you need to learn a little bit more, get in a little bit deeper in your own education, uh, in your own training. So teaching is a great way to, to learn. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a student uh, of teaching and of music. Uh, this is one reason I do, the, I do the channel and I make these videos so, so I can learn from you. All right, and we can help each other. This is World Drum Club, I'm Kalani Das. This has been another a video on facilitation. If you like it, hit that thumb. Hit the whole hand. I guess the thumb's part of the hand. I don't know. Hit the bell if you want to get notifications. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And see us at patreon.com slash Kalani for more. Thanks for being here. I'll see you in a future lesson.